to the Village of Wappingers Falls Water Board meeting for Monday, August 10th, 2020. Um, I'm going to do the roll call. So, uh, Jason Ensign. Here. And I am here. And Kevin Huber. Here. And so, and I am here, Matt Alexander, Pat Chase, is the water board chairman, is absent today uh, due to work responsibilities. So I would like to start with asking if we could get a motion to accept the minutes of the last meeting. I'll make it. Second? Second. Second. In favor? Aye. Any opposed? Could I have a motion to pay the, pil the bills? I'll make it. I'll second, second it. Seconded by uh, Jason Ensign. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. And I'd like to ask John Zarowski to speak to us first. Hey, everybody. So this month we had a couple of things come up between uh, Kenny and I. Um, one of them was uh, the Berkeley Square, the altitude well in their water storage tank keeps filling, and you're basically pouring water uh, into the storm sewer. Uh, this, this is a problem in a couple of different areas. I mean, you're wasting water, number one, but it's also a violation of your MS4 permit village as it's chlorinated water. So um, I've offered to Kenny to uh, write a letter to give to the attorney so that they can review it, um, basically threatening fines to Berkeley Square to get their attention. Maybe either get them repair the fines would far exceed repairing the altitude belt, um, if, especially if you come at it with the MS4. So, I mean, I've offered to do that. If you want me to do that, I'd be happy to write a letter um, for the attorney to review for the village to submit. So, that would be the first thing. Um, also, this month, apparently at the planning board level to the building permit level, we have a, a breakdown in capturing when a meter needs to be changed or is for it being modified. So um, I think at some point we need to talk about this, probably not today, maybe we'll do it next month when there's a full board, but we need to come up with a process that captures when a, when a meter is changing so Marie can uh, uh, properly bill it. Uh, if it's like, I forget the one building that's going from four services to two or one service that um, kind of fell through the cracks. So I mean, I think, we need to just maybe come up with a form or a part of the application added as an application so that when it shows up with the building permit that he knows to notify Marie that things are changing there. Um, we, um, we are moving ahead with putting the report together for the Delaware and tank. I don't know if you're aware of that. Um, as a repair that tank first and set a PRV valve near the bridge. Um, for the, until we can get windless replaced as well, but uh, at least moving ahead with Delavern and, and coming up with a, a breakdown of the costs, possibly a share with the, the developer of um, There is the the proposal that came in for the, the data loggers. I don't, I don't know if we want to discuss that this month or put that off another month. Putting in the the leak detection system. If we want to go there or not this month. I think you can uh, bring that up. I'm just going to say that we don't need to vote on uh, the letter. That's something that you can do with Brian and Kenny, because that would actually come out of Brian's office. And if that's um, if Brian is okay with that, you can go ahead and send that out. And okay. um, so I would advise that you should meet with the attorney, uh, the code enforcement officer, and uh, Kenny from the water department to. Uh, discuss that matter and move forward. And I don't think there's anything else left to vote on. So I, I, I do think you should talk about um, the other issue, but I'm gonna let John Kozak go ahead and do the water report and tell Kevin that uh, he can go ahead and go and we can just record the water report and go back to you, John Zarowski, when John Kozak okay. is done. Okay, Kevin, thank you. Uh, thank you. Great, bye-bye. So, John Kozak, you want to take us through the water report? Uh, everything seems pretty good. We did have a uh, 
light and heavy day thanks to Berkeley, as John had mentioned. Um, this is the third actual time that this has happened, but it's uh, the second time that it's been pretty hefty where we've lost hundreds of thousands of gallons of water uh, based on human error. So uh, absolutely, there should be some sort of mechanical device or some sort of uh, alarm in place. And I don't know why they haven't done it yet, but they haven't. But as far as everything else, everything's pretty decent right up until today. Uh, we did have a failure on one of our coliform samples that we had just taken. So we are doing, which is why Kenny's not here right now. Uh, so we are doing the protocol for that, uh, which is just resampling. And, uh, so right now he's on his way to Newburgh to drop off the resampled samples. Um, that's about it. Okay, are there any questions for John? John Zarowski, you want to take us through your part? Okay. Um, I'm not going to vote anything. So, with the, um, do you want to circle back around to the planning board? Or which one do you want to go through for the detail? The data logger, the planning board? I think we should go through the data logger. Okay. So, the data logger, they're looking at putting in the um, basically listening valves to listening microphones into about half the hydrants in the system. The, uh, the proposal and, and part of the proposal is then doing a monthly survey. So there'd be 12 monthly surveys plus the initial install. And I'm just scrolling through that. I think um, this was distributed to everybody. At least I got it. I don't know if everybody else got it. So basically your 50% of the system would be monitored at 65, it's 8,000 for installation. Um, he's got valve cleaning in here, but Kenny's saying that he'll do the valve fitting himself, but I don't think that's a big piece of the, uh, I think that's just a simple piece of the installation. So, but still it might save a little money there. And like I said, there'd be 12 surveys at, well, I have two different prices here, 1575 each. So the first year with installation is 25,175 and then the following three years, so a four year total would be 17,175 each. I mean, the having them do the survey, I mean, Kenny would kind of prefer for them to do the, um, the conventional surveys but I mean, I, I I don't know which way to go on that one. I mean, you could do them in-house so you could have these guys do it. Once you have the microphones installed, it's really the software evaluating everything. So, but anyway, the, the proposal came in, so you should kind of talk to, um, ideally I like Kenny here to actually discuss it a little bit further. So. So can we set up the next O&M meeting to be, to go over this? item in more detail that would be good that would be good i'm gonna want to understand the um how this is different from actual meters being installed along the way what what this amounts to is you basically have listening devices at all your valves and when they hear more sound they'll, they'll that it's an indication that there's more flow than, so they have a baseline that they go against and when there's more sound there, that means that, or sound when there shouldn't be there, um, like in the middle of the night, there shouldn't be high flows. The, the microphones pick up more noise. So it gives you a, and then you can, by having the system covered, you can pretty much guess or know which area to go look in for the break. So it kind of brings you down to, zone, gets you into a zone where the break is and then you can, from there, um, isolate it and find it quicker. Plus having it every month and you'll, you won't be, like sometimes small breaks go on for a long time before you actually discover them. So. Do so they I, ever do anything like that? 
John, do they ever do anything like this with meters? Um, I mean, meters, again, you're doing, you'll see um, a higher, well, meters only work, uh, right now you don't have any meters intermittent throughout the system. So you'd have to install meters to get the same thing where this is just putting it into an existing belt. So metering would be a lot more, you'd end up having to have more meters in and you'd have to put meter vaults vaults in all over the place to do it with meters. This just is taking advantage of the existing valves. So it's, it's uh, as far as, it's, it's a more cost effective solution for doing it. Meters, I mean, the existing meters are all inside buildings. So that only helps you if you've got a, you know, a break internal to a building. So right now you don't have meters all throughout the system. So to install meters, in the mains would be more expensive. Right, you need a valve in a vault and probably power there, so there are batteries at least, and then you have confined space entry for all these things. Unless, I mean, you're not putting valves above ground. Well, you could, but then you gotta heat the space as well, so. This gets kind of onerous to put valve meter, I mean, like this, just takes advantage of all the existing valves. You drop a, a listening device on all the valves and they'll be able to tell just by the difference in sound where things are, you know, where there's a problem. Okay, does uh, Jason, you have any questions or John? No. I just have a comment. It's, uh, it's a pretty neat system. I've never seen it personally, but the way it sounds, uh, it's pretty elaborate and um, sophisticated at the moment, but um, it does cut down on, on time as far as when we're looking for a leak. Uh, I know that the last time we were looking literally, I think it was 30 something hours straight until we found something, um, which is also a, a burden on the village, but uh, with this, we'll probably just call George. George can go and do his analysis, and within two or three hours, uh, we could have a report, find out where it is, triangulate, find it within. Yeah, you can find it quickly. And, and he also is doing a monthly thing where he'll be able to tell you monthly if, if you have excess flow somewhere. So we'll get a heads up that there is a leak before you really even maybe notice it. Okay, John Zarelski, do you have any other items for us? Uh, there was the data logger, deliverant tank we talked about, um, Berkeley Square. I guess somebody, you mentioned something about the hydrant on West Main? Yeah. On 717, I, get, I don't know if it was Kenny, maybe John Kozak knows, a discussion with Nancy from KC Engineering about reason why the hydrant on West Main should not be moved from its current location. I don't know where they were gonna move it or why, I don't, I'm assuming it's the one that's going up the hill on the right. Probably, I don't know how far away from the flag or the light pole it is. Actually two hydrants on West Main Street. Um, Nancy had wanted to try and get the four foot for the sidewalk mm. and there's no physical place uh, either forward or backward to put these hydrants. You move them back, there's not enough ground to hold them uh, because there's vacant lots that are basically cliffs if you were to move them back. And if you move them forward, the gas line is there. As well as if you move them uh, you could eliminate them, but I wouldn't suggest that. I'm sure Jason Ensign doesn't want them. Definitely not. So, um, hopefully. Do you know exactly there. what two they are, John? Yeah, Code there's nine? basically, yeah, there's uh, two going right up West Main Street. Um, before you get to the turn where the Shoemaker building is, 
And then the one where the building collapsed was? Yes, where the building collapsed is one of those. So we couldn't move it back because there was no place to move it. Uh, and then there's another one further up. And basically the same situation. There's another vacant lot where the brown fence is. Uh, and once again, you can't move it back either. So how about the one further up that's just past? There's one on the turn. Yeah, that one's fine. Correct. All right, so it's the two midway. Yes. So there's also uh, there's duck bank right behind the hydrants. Not that you would want to move them only inches back. Um, so you'd have to try your best to avoid digging around that. Um, and there's a gas main right in front of the hydrant, and you could only move the hydrant two inches forward anyway. So. Yeah, but then it's almost on West Main Street, too. I mean, the curb's right there. I guarantee a state truck will hit it with a plow. Yeah, plow time? Yeah, definitely. So where have we come with it? Are they just going to leave it, or we don't know yet? Uh, last I had spoke with Nancy is that uh, when they get to it, when contact gets to it, which is probably going to be maybe even this week, um, they are going to assess what's underground and uh, make a decision on whether or not he should be moved or if they stay. And then hopefully that will be the evidence enough to uh, go to the state or whoever is giving us our grant and, and say, hey, we can't move these sidewalks. Um, you said four foot sidewalk? I believe there's some sort of rule. John would know better for HD, for handicap access, you need to have a four-foot sidewalk minimum. So how wide is that sidewalk now? I mean, that sidewalk's pretty wide. You mean handicap access going up and down because there's no ramp there? Well, the, the width of the sidewalk yeah, all right. is supposed to be four foot for handicap usage. Not so much access, but just... But we don't know how wide it is now. Off the top of my head, I don't. But I can find out. Go I'll ahead. go there later. I got a drill tonight at the firehouse, and I'll just go measure it. Okay. That would be good. So if it's four feet, we're good. We can keep it. If it's over four feet, it's fine also? If it's over four feet, it's fine. It's just, um, do you want it moved? doesn't sound like you can move it enough to make it worthwhile moving. I mean, if you move it, I think the only thing we could do is maybe move it up, right? The one that's a little closer to the park that they're doing. But then again, then well, I mean, you time. don't want them spaced too far. So you would have to look at your overall spacing. They're supposed to be within five or 600 feet of one another. Yep. Ideally. Yeah. Keep in mind, if you wanted to actually move a hydrant laterally, you're going to have to dig up the main. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, because it's it's attached with, um, it's rotted to the um, the main. See, yeah. that's, that's the key. Can I talk to you? Yeah. The key is we don't know if anything there is rotted. This is the most important thing. So if it's not rotted and you go digging behind it, you should actually cut off that main so that no water is flowing through it for safety. And you're going to cut off the whole supply to the second and the third water. So that's the key. So Kenny, are you looking to leave them, bolt them hydrants right where they are? Or? I mean, I don't know why you would change them it's there's nothing wrong with them they put them there for a reason and if you put them too far back you know you're not going to have anything behind it and then you have to dig up underneath the duck bank yeah rot it and it's you know you have to rot it back to the valve we don't know if the valve is rotted and if the valve isn't rotted you got to go to the main to rot it or you know look for a bell prior to the to the T on the main, which is in the middle of the street. Just, it's a bad location, really what it comes down to. You know, and you can't move it up, you're too close to the other hydrant, you can't move it down because you're too close to the other hydrant. Yeah. So, 
you know, for, for, for a handicapped sidewalk under that condition, just not worth it. I would tend to agree with you. It's like, yeah, you do what I, you, I you, do what you can, and, and if you can't get it for other reasons, then, it, you know, there's justification for not being four feet. But the state would sign off on that, Matt. I mean, would that be all right if it we're not able to move it and it's a little less than four feet, or are they gonna give us a hard time about it? I mean, I would have to ask Nancy to see what what she's dealt with because she's been the one dealing with the DOT. So I will have this conversation with her tomorrow or Wednesday and see what's going on and I'll if you guys are, have her put up you know, regarding this whole matter. With we the, could also bring this up at the Wednesday meeting if there's something we have to act on. Okay. Jason, I know you're not going to like this, but while you're there measuring, just consider if we eliminated them, how bad could it be? If you, I, I'm looking on my spotted dog right now which has all the hydrant locations. There's one in front of the county players. There, yeah, right across from county players and the other ones in front of the gold leaf place or whatever. It used to be the gold leaf building right there. I mean, if you eliminated one, I guess it ain't bad. I mean, I wouldn't eliminate two because then that gives us the one by Givens Avenue and then the one on the turn. I mean, that that's almost a thousand feet. If you eliminate both of them, I guarantee it's over a thousand feet, but I mean, I could see doing one if that's the case, but if we eliminate that one, they're probably going to tell you to eliminate the one further down in front of uh, where the building collapsed, the Mount Carmel building. Right? Correct. And then it's yeah. like if you want to cut, cap it, you know, you still either got to rot it or you got to put a plug in the uh, valve, which is on the inside of the road next to the curb. Which also requires digging in the road. So you can dig in either way if you're gonna do that. Man, I'd much rather leave both of them. I'm hoping I'm hoping that sidewalk's four foot now. Maybe they can just make the sidewalk wider in that spot. I don't know. If you're going to put a hydrant there, I don't see why you couldn't put a sidewalk there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's possible. Huh? I don't think that's possible. Well, can you take, um, Jason? Yeah. Can you, can you take a couple of pictures of it and send them to me? Yeah, I'll do it tonight. I'll take some pictures. What? What's your? Right. You got a cell phone number? Uh, Eight four five. Two six four seven four zero four. Seven four zero four? Yeah. Two six four. Yeah, I'll I'll uh, take I'll take pictures of both them hydrants with the tape measure and I'll send them to you. Yeah, that's just so I can have an intelligent conversation with Nancy about it. Yeah, I'll probably send them to you a little after seven tonight. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Anything else you need to bring up? Uh, I've covered everything. Okay, I wrote the letter for the um, residents on Prospect and South Mazir, and I just want to go over the intent of it. And before we get this, Hold on. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to uh, tell you what I wrote. I uh, said um, the houses located at uh, Prospect and South Mazir are all, and I give the actual addresses, are all served from one service line, which is not owned by the village that goes through the uh, 
backyards of the South Mazir Avenue homes. The village has in the past serviced the line when it was damaged. However, it is it increasingly seems like the service line is in need of repair because we would like to continue to service this line we would need to obtain an easement from each of the property owners if we are to continue this. Um, if the property owners do not allow for this easement, then each property owner would then have to install service from the main on the street, on their street facing the front of their homes. Uh, if we realize that you might need to discuss this in a meeting, therefore we are proposing a meeting to take place at the location, and then I'll give a date and a time, uh, and it would be during a weekday. So, is there any? Is that okay? From everybody's fine, perspective, Matt. Okay. I think that's fine, Matt. The only thing I would mention is what the width of the easement that you would like to have. Okay, good. I'll add that in. Okay. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna get this out. I'm gonna talk to um, the water department, uh, maybe one other member of the water board and John Zarowski. And actually, I think we've got everybody here. Uh, is there a time? I would say the best time would be not this week, but the following week. Is there a day that works for people? Next week. Whatever day you want. I'm generally open next week. Okay, how are you, Ken and John? But I think the only day that's a little difficult is Monday for us. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do this on Wednesday, August 19th. So I'll propose that as a time, uh, and I'm gonna. I know I'm gonna ha end up having to call people. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna propose Wednesday and see if that's something that we're able to organize. I'll get. Um, uh, I'll get Marie calling about it, and then if she runs into trouble with that, we'll try Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday as backups. You have no time now. You'll get back to us on a time. I'm gonna, yeah, I think it's gonna probably going to be in the morning first thing or in the uh, late late afternoon because of the, uh, we might need to talk to people who work during the day. But if not, if we can do it, I would say early afternoon will be my first my choice. Would that work for you, Jason? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Okay. All right. So uh, we'll see what we get out of that. And I think if that's it, then we could close the meeting if you're all good. Yeah, I'm good. They're doing adjournment. Yeah, so I am going to uh, ask for a motion to adjourn, Jason. Yeah, I'll make that. And I'll second it. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> All right. Very good. Thank you. Did you want to set the next O&M meeting or no? Oh, yes. We should do that. Yeah. Yes. I was just pulling up my calendar. So. And, and Ken, we decided that we would talk about the data loggers at the next meeting, at the O&M meeting. Okay. Can we make sure that we yes. get the right to the next O&M meeting at that email? I don't think we got yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. Get that sent out. Um, the regular meeting for the village is, or the village workshop is on the 9th. So the, the board, this board meeting would be the 7th. Yep. And the O&M is either going to be Tuesday the 1st or yeah, Tuesday the 1st or Thursday the 3rd, which they were. Together. So uh, we could also set the, the 7th is Labor Day.
so we could set that oh. meeting on the 8th. Right. Uh, is that okay with everybody? Yeah. So we'll do the regular water board meeting on the 8th. And um, did, did we decide a date for the O&M? You want a Thursday or a Tuesday? I'm good with either one. Yeah, right open. So let's say uh, Thursday, September 3rd. Okay, 2.30? 2.30. And John, are you going to send us a? Yeah, I'll forward it to everybody. I, I thought it was sent out to everybody. I'm sorry. OK. It. Very good, then. Thank you. All right. All right. See you, See you next right. time. Thanks, All guys. Right. Bye. Bye.